Hi, welcome to Fundamentals Friday. This one's a follow on from the Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier we looked at a couple of weeks back. And once again, it's a little useful circuit building block for all sorts of applications. We're going to choose one typical application today where it may be useful. And that's in the case of a uh, microcontroller, for example, or your circuit, widget, whatever it is, powered from, say, for argument's sake, a little three volt coin cell battery, CR2032, or a couple of double A's, or a couple of triple A's, or whatever, three volt supply. And let's say you actually wanted to power something that needs a five volt rail, like one of those um, LCDs, a typical LCD module. You can get 3.3 volt ones, but much more common and much cheaper to get and much more wider availability of five volt versions. So how do you actually hook that up? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. We're going to look at one way, and the building block we're going to look at is called the Dixon Voltage Doubler, sometimes called a Dixon Multiplier, sometimes called a Dixon Charge Pump, all sorts of things, or just a charge pump, doesn't have to have the name Dixon in it. And what it is, it takes us back to the circuit we looked at with the Cockcroft Walton Multiplier, and in uh, this case, the uh, Green Acre circuit that we looked at. If we had a transformer with a three volt peak to peak input signal, it actually level shifted that up and gave us six volts DC out. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in down below. It explains all this. And we're gonna use this basic circuit again. Once again, a little rearrangement again, and it'll create our Dixon voltage doubler. And we can do exactly the same thing because like in the case of this product here, we've got our microcontroller, we don't want a transformer, we don't want all sorts of things. I mean, there's various options you could, you know, up here you could, if you wanted to double your voltage from three volts to six volts, you could use a 7660 uh, charge pump chip. And that's a classic jelly bean building block part. It's a capacitor voltage doubler, voltage inverter. You can use it in various configurations, but it's, you know, it might cost a dollar a chip or something like that. And well, you know, you want to keep your bill of materials cost low as you're doing a lot of projects. For a one-off, might not be a problem. There's various ways uh, to do it, but let's try and lower the cost here by doing it with diodes and capacitors, because you've already got, likely, diodes and capacitors in your bill of materials anyway. And, well, in any case, even if you don't have the diodes, for example, they're incredibly cheap to add to your circuit. So we can replace a 7660 voltage charge pump voltage doubler with a Dixon voltage doubler. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's get rid of the transformer. We don't need a transformer that's only useful for high voltage generation. We're not talking high voltage generation here. We're talking low voltage, and that's where this Dixon voltage doubler comes into play. In an absolute perfect example is the case we've got here. We want to double three volts into uh, roughly five volts to power our LCD. Ideally, you know, you'd have six volts and then you could voltage regulate it down and all that sort of stuff, but we won't really go into that. Now, how do we do it? Well, a quick rearrangement. Take our classic uh, Greenacre circuit there and erase that and put our diode in series like that and a capacitor down like that, but let's not have it go into ground shall we let's have it another input here so we've got two inputs coming in here like this and what do we have in our design up here well we've got three volts dc and we've got a microcontroller what can microcontrollers do they can generate clocks pwm signals so we can actually use the microcontroller to generate a clock signal so what we're going to do here is we've got two inputs like this and this one will actually put to three volts DC. So we'll tie that to our voltage level and then we'll feed in a clock into this input down here and magic happens, which I'll explain in a minute. We're gonna get six volts DC out. And if you've seen the Cockcroft Walton multi voltage multiplier video, you'll see how that works. We've effectively level shifted that up feeding in the clock, which we'll get in from the transformer in the other configuration. And this circuit configuration is now a Dixon voltage doubler. We'll get six volts DC out of that with nothing more than a single pin on our microcontroller generating a PWM signal. Beauty. Now, if you're paying attention, 
when I swapped these components around here, I didn't actually do anything at all. This circuit configuration is actually exactly the same as the Greenacre voltage doubler, except that we're now, um, we don't have like an, an AC signal source from a transformer or something like that. We've just got a, a, a three volt uh, voltage source or our DC source plus a clock, but it's exactly the same thing. Essentially, you can switch those around and then this is waveform up here, three volts down there, the um, anode of the diodes down there, series diode there, it's exactly the same circuit. Haven't changed anything. So our Dixon voltage doubler is a bit of a con. It's actually a Greenacre doubler. There's really essentially no difference. And the waveform and how it operates is exactly the same as before. So let's have a look at the operation of this thing. Now, once again, we're going to assume that we've got ideal diodes. We'll get into the practical uh, considerations in there later. But ideal diode, let's assume also that the circuit's reached a steady state and the capacitor is charged up and we've got no load on this thing, okay? So this point number one here is uh, three volts DC here. It's charged up to three volts. Well, there's three volts across that capacitor there. So when this um, is uh, low, when waveform two down here is low, then our point up here, number one, is going to be three volts above there. But when this waveform goes high, there's already three volts across our capacitor, so then it's going to double up to six volts at that point, and it can't flow back through the diode, it's going to prevent that. So what do we end up with at this point number one? We end up with this shifted, once again, waveform shifted like that, uh, above this bias reference voltage, which happens to be our battery voltage or our supply voltage, it could be three volts, five volts, whatever your DC supply voltage is, and bingo, it shifted that waveform up like that. And this point here is the red waveform there like that. And of course, we've just got our basic rectifier here with the diode and the cap, which then smooths that out to our fixed six volts DC out. Bingo, we've doubled our voltage with just a single pin on our microcontroller or the clock could come from somewhere else in your circuit. Usually you're gonna have it coming from a micro though, and that's all there is to it. It's just a Greenacre doubler. But yeah, it's called a Dixon doubler, whatever. And the reason these things are sometimes called charge pumps as well is because the capacitor charges up and then you're, so it's already charged up and then you're pumping more into it. You're utilizing the charge that's already on the capacitor to boost that voltage up. And that's essentially what we're doing. We're essentially just level shifting again. Once again, we're not actually doubling you know, there's no doubling here. This waveform here doesn't get twice as big as this one. It's just shifted it up like that. And we're utilizing that DC reference level to do, and the diode steering to do that. But unlike our high voltage DC generation, these low voltage uh, charge pumps or doublers usually have to drive at least some little load. You're driving like an LCD, which might take, you know, one or two milliamps or something like that. But for, you know, a couple of milliamps, it's going to be good enough using typical uh, you know, fairly low uh, value caps in here, like 10 microfarads or something like that. You can easily probably do a couple of milliamps. If you want in the order of hundreds of milliamps, eh, you're not really going to get it from one of these uh, uh, capacitor charge pumps. But of course you can do an awful lot with a milliamp. You can fly to the moon on a milliamp or drive an LCD or uh, drive an op amp or something like that. You can even uh, regulate, use one of those uh, low power, low dropout uh, voltage regulators if you wanted to regulate the output because when you start putting a load on here, as we saw last time, even if it's a small load, you know, a drawing a milliamp or two, then you're going to start to see, well, you're, let's draw in the blue waveform. It's not going to look perfect like that anymore. Sorry about the red one going there. It's going to start drooping like this and then it'll kick it back up and it'll droop down again and it'll kick it back up and you're going to get ripple on this DC output here. And sometimes that's not desirable if you're, you know, powering some analog stuff or something, but you might be able to say have a voltage regulator a five volt voltage regulator in there. Once again, we're assuming ideal diodes. We're not actually gonna get six volts out of this thing when we build it up, obviously, because you know, a, a diode loss, you know, 0.3 volts for a shock key or something like that. But 
um, you know, the theory remains the same. You could have a low voltage uh, dropout in there. You base these capacitors based on the discharge rate of your load and bingo, you can get a nice clean regulated output for your little project. Great. So sometimes that's a lot more simpler and cost effective than changing the battery solution for your product. Like for example, I use this in my little micro watch uh, project, my scientific calculator watch, right? I powered it from a single three volt CR2032 coin cell battery. I couldn't really put a, a higher voltage battery in there. It just didn't suit the system design of the calculator watch. So it was much more beneficial to use one of these Dixon voltage doublers than it was to re-engineer or you know, change my battery solution for this thing. And at this stage, you should be thinking, aha, can we use that multi-stage configuration like we did on the Cockroft Walton multiplier? Well, yes, of course we can. It's exactly the same circuit. It's just sort of in a different usage um, configuration here. So we've added another stage here to this so we can multiply our three volts DC up to nine volts DC. Beauty, how does it work? Exactly the same in configuration. Imagine this, that is still our same circuit as before, okay? But we've now got a six volt DC reference here, point up here instead of a three volt DC reference point here. So we've just shifted that waveform up again. I won't go through all the details, it's exactly the same as I explained in the Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier video. So that three volts peak to peak from our microcontroller here, and it will be three volts peak to peak, of course, from a uh, CMOS microcontroller, then it just shifts it from six up to nine. So point three here, the green waveform is exactly the same. It's just shift, shifted it up. This point, this point here gets shifted up again, and then we've got nine volts, and then we've got our final rectifier on the output, which gives us nine volts DC on the output. But of course, once we put a load on, it's gonna sag like that, but eh, there you go. Then we could certainly whack in our five volt voltage regulator and have heaps of margin. You wouldn't even need a low dropout type. Beauty. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is the new Teespring crowdfunded triple five timer t-shirt. If you missed out on it, ah, uh, well, I might run another one soon. We'll see, but top quality, I love it. And next up, we have Dave looking trendy and smart in a nice little Teespring number. He looks equally at home in the dumpster as he does on the workbench. And to the breadboard we go. Deja vu, folks. We've been here before. Nothing new at all. It's exactly what we looked at the other week. But we'll go through the motions again. Here it is, Dave CAD drawing. We've got our three volt uh, DC supply, which will come from our uh, bench supply. We've got uh, three volts DC coming from the function gen. And yes, it's uh, shifted up to 1.5 volts. So it's not uh, AC, so it's zero to three volts. So it simulates our um, our, uh, the signal coming from our microcontroller. And then we have our multi-stage doubler. There's our first stage there, and there's our second stage there. And we should get nine volts out of here. And these are the um, channels on the oscilloscope, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. And it's exactly the same as what we had last time as well on the scope screen. All four channels are ground reference down here on that bottom uh, graticule down there, two volts per division on all the channels there, and we've got our peak voltage of each of the channels. So let's have a look here on the circuit. Our point one here is actually, there it is, six volts. Now, so we've got our three volts input, by the way, our uh, square wave amplitude there is three volts. I haven't shown the square wave actually coming in because it's exactly the same as that. And it's six volts, and then the top of point two here Notice that we've got our diode loss between there and there, but with no load at the moment, so it's very small. And then the top of the next point, channel three up here, 8.2 volts, and that's actually the uh, blue waveform up there. So point three is the blue waveform, sorry, point one is the yellow waveform there, point two is the uh, green waveform there, which is your DC value across there, and because that AC signal gets converted into DC, that's our six volt DC reference, and then it gets uh, pumped up again, shifted up by the blue waveform there, channel three, up to, well, in this case, 8.1 volts peak, and then our final DC output 
is the purple one there and bingo 8.1 volts and what happens if i shift my three volts signal here well let's adjust our bench supply there we go as we move it up and down all the waveforms oh we just lost our trigger there of course once we get to that point but uh, we can boost that up there and there you go it just shifts that waveform up and down so with precisely three volts dc input and our three volt uh, peak to peak square wave which we can generate with a microcontroller we can get a final output voltage here of 8 volts there it is and this is using just uh, bog standard uh, 1N914 or 4148 diodes not even the uh, Schottky type now let's have a look what happens if we put a lousy little 10k load on this thing so our uh, final output DC voltage of uh, 8 volts here divided by 10k assuming it stays at uh, 8 volts of course divided by 10k 800 microamps so we're drawing less than a milliamp here we go let's connect it up and bingo look you'll see it drop and you'll notice that i can probably boost all the channels up like that you can notice the ripple starting to appear on channel two there which is our second point which is our supposedly our dc reference in there it was a straight line before but now you can see the ripple in there due to the fact that we're drawing a 10k load and by the way i didn't put uh, values on here these are actually uh, 0.47 microfarads and let's drop that load by an order of magnitude from 10k down to 1k here we go there we go oh look at that so <laughs> look it's practically useless now 3.2 volts uh top value of our final output as you can see it's absolutely useless when we try and power a 1k load there our three volts we're still got our three volt uh, both of our three volt signals going in but it's just it doesn't work anymore it's useless and we'll bump that up to 2k and as you can see significantly improved there there we go and 3k 4k 5k and you can see the progression in that but of course we're not using shocky diodes here in practice you would almost always use a shocky diode in this configuration unless you had really low current and you really didn't care generally you're not going to use your uh, little uh, jelly bean 1n uh, 414s you're going to use some sort of shocky diode they're you know practically the same price anyway so let's assume that we just had the single stage configuration here like this and here's our final output voltage 4.62 volts at uh, this is a 10k load uh, half a microfarad uh, caps on there and by the way switching frequency is 10 kilohertz here a typical uh, frequency that you might get out typical pwm frequency you might get out of your microcontroller uh, for example and we're only getting a dc output voltage of 4.62 volts there but that's probably going to be good enough uh, only talking like um so you know 4.62 volts divided by 10k so we're only talking half a milliamp some lcds can go uh down that low but uh not all of them but you know potentially we could actually uh, you know almost power one of those little uh, lcd modules because they are fairly tolerant of the uh, supply voltage would be able to power it with just a single stage circuit with even crappy uh you know 4148 diodes in there and a low value of capacitance so what happens if we replace this cap half a microfarad with say 47 microfarads fairly big step up in value well let's do that i'm going to rip that out there and i'm going to stick in a 470 microfarad cap aha look at that we're now jumped up to about 4.8 volts or thereabouts so what's uh, our frequency going to do well of course it's going to change the discharge uh, curve of this cap so um, of course this is still our 47 microfarads in here but our second stage one up there you'll be able to you can just see the ripple on there at the moment but let's increase the uh, frequency shall we so here we go oh well, well we can drop well we, we can increase it of course and of course we just get better you know there's you can't see any ripple on there now but if we lower that frequency down significantly aha look at that you can start seeing four kilohertz three you can start seeing the ripple appearing and the droop there if we go down to one kilohertz you know ah pretty bad so you don't want to be operating these things at one kilohertz 10 kilohertz reasonably good rule of thumb now what happens if we change all of these caps 
247 microfarads. Pretty beefy value. Bingo, here it is. This is with our 1K load. And the amazing thing is that's still at 1 kilohertz, as you can see. So it is possible to use a value like that, but uh, you have a frequency like that, but you have to go um, much higher in your capacitance values, and that's with a 1K load. So um, our there we go. We're drawing 6 milliamps from this circuit, just over 6 volts on our second stage output there. So 6 milliamps this thing is taking with even 1N4148 diodes. But of course that is a uh, two stage one to get our 6 volts. So we're getting nothing near our 9 volts we expect. But eh, good enough. But even that single stage one, 4.7 volts there, is enough to drive like, you know, four or five milliamps, even at one kilohertz, not a problem. And because there's no ripple, we're not going to actually see any uh, benefit there by going up in frequency, as you can see. Frequency is only going to matter once you start drooping, and if we take our frequency down, 81 hertz, look at that. Because we're using such large value caps, our switch in frequency can actually be relatively low, you know, in the order of 100 hertz or so and we're still going to get a good enough DC voltage out that we could use to power an LCD or something else perhaps especially if we decide to uh, put an extra linear regulator after that but of course generally speaking you know you're not going to be using uh, 47 mic caps in there for example they're just more expensive um, you know and they're larger and they're, you know you're going to use little uh, ceramics that you've already got in the circuit typically uh, you know if you're doing an SMD design you might have uh, one microfarad uh, caps in there for example might be uh, very typical or something like that all the 470 ends um, that I was using before 0.47 microfarads and as you can see, yeah, we couldn't get the several milliamps out of there even at the higher frequencies. So as you can see, it's all going to be a trade-off here of the value of the capacitance versus your load versus your diode, the type of diode you got, the diode drops. I won't go into putting shock keys in there as well. If we put shock keys in there, we'll find that these waveforms will all be shifted up, we'll have low, lower diode losses and stuff like that. So, you know, by all means, build this thing up and experiment with it. And it's a great circuit to use next time you need a simple voltage doubler or to get you know a higher uh, value rail out of your project that's powered from a couple of batteries or something like that. You don't have to re-engineer your battery solution, you can just use one of these doublers or in this case a tripler. Now let's look at a practical configuration of this. In this case it's my MicroWatch project. Here it is, here's the schematic for it. You can uh, download it from uh, my MicroWatch uh, website if you really want to, but it's a microcontroller. Well, here's the actual thing, powered from a single uh, CR2032 battery here. Let's switch it on. It's in power saving mode at the moment. Haven't set the time or anything like that, but there you go. It's the world's only do-it-yourself scientific calculator watch. Now, uh, the Interesting thing about this is that I've used, well, there's two interesting things. One's, one is that I've used two Dixon doublers here. Might look a bit unusual, but trust me, I've got one for the LCD here that powers the 5 volt LCD. It's not a 3.3 volt one or 3 volt one, so it uh, needs 5 volts. So I've got a Dixon doubler in there, and I've got another one for the LED backlight as well. I think it had like uh, two LEDs in series. That's why I had to actually uh, do that, this particular module. Anyway, so I've got two Dixon doublers in there. The configuration is basically exactly like this, of course. We've got a fixed DC voltage here, in this case three volts from the battery. We've got our uh, three volt uh, square wave coming from our PIC microcontroller in there. But in this case, of course, we're only using a single stage doubler here, so ignore the rest of that. There we go. That's basically what we've got here. Now, it might look a bit unusual in that, well, why aren't these diodes here going to three volts like this. Why are they going to a pin on the microcontroller? Aha, that's actually a feature. It allows the microcontroller to actually switch the output off and on under software control. So if the, the output here, instead of tying this to three volts, you tie it to a pin on the microcontroller. When that's high, three volts, you apply your PWM signal, uh, well, in there, then it switches your LCD voltage on or whatever it else you want to power. If you set that low and switch off your PWM signal, 
bingo, your output voltage goes down to zero. And I can do that for both the LCD backlight and the voltage on the LCD. And in this case, I've got uh, a shock here, of course, a standard uh, BAT54, really uh, jelly bean um, stuff in there, super cheap, SM, standard SMD type. I've got only a lousy 100N in there, and I've got 10 microfarads there. On the output, I actually forget uh, what value I'm switching it at. I don't know, it's a, you know, five kilohertz or something like that, 10 kilohertz. Don't exactly remember, but so there you go. There's a real world example of uh, the two different uh, reasons why you want to use it, the LCD and the backlight, uh, of course, because I was forced to use this LCD 53 by 20 millimeters, and it had a certain type of backlight, and it had to be a certain type, I couldn't use anything else, couldn't just start uh, substitute it for anything, so really, um, you know, I had to do this, this was my only choice, apart from using, uh, like, a, as I said before, like a 7660 uh, voltage uh, doubler, uh, charge pump voltage doubler or something like that, Eh, it's more expensive, so I just decided to go with the diode and capacitor solution. Piece of cake. And then I added in the bonus feature of being able to switch off the LCD. As you've seen, it goes into a power down mode that actually disables the uh, voltage to the LCD, so it doesn't uh, draw any current at all, and this thing can actually get a reasonably long battery life because it's only powering the microcontroller. The LCD I can completely switch off, and of course the backlight voltage, I can switch that off and on. There it is, it's gone into low power state, it's only drawing, you know, uh, microamps instead of, you know, a milliamp or two, and you switch it on, draws a couple of milliamps, operates for a few minutes, then auto switches off. Real world practical example of a tricked up, I guess, uh, Dixon doubler here with on-off capability. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that follow-up to the Cockcroft Walton voltage multiplier. This is the Dixon doubler, or uh, charge pump doubler, diode doubler, whatever you want to call it. It's an interesting little and useful little building block circuit. And remember, if you like uh, Fundamentals Friday, please give it a big thumbs up, dual thumbs up. And if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EV blog forum. Catch you next time. Greetings, Professor Falcon. Shall we play a game? How about a nice game of chess? Gentlemen, I wouldn't trust this overgrown pile of microchips any further than I could throw it.